Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Nancy Stein, a whole foods plant-based teaching chef. Welcome, Nancy. Hi. Thank you for having me, Grace. Thank you so much for being on the show. So tell us how long you've been plant-based. Well, we're going on 15 years now. It's kind of hard to believe it. You know, we keep, we're kind of shocked ourselves, but um, it's been a journey and uh, it's been a, you know, a real learning process for us. Um, we first went plant-based when my husband was diagnosed with aggressive prostate cancer. And, you know, when he said he wasn't going to do any treatments, I was kind of like, whoa, you know, I was a little shocked and, and I had to come to terms with it. And, um, you know, by the grace of God, and a lot of prayers, you know, I said, okay, let's, let's give this a try. Let's, you know, try and go plant-based. So we started our research and we went on cruises that were holistic and we learned as much as we could in the beginning. And, uh, you know, it kind of just went from there. Uh, we, uh, at the time there were no really cookbooks or anything in, in the bookstores. Uh, so I only had a choice of a couple books, and one was A Thousand Vegan Recipes by Robin Robertson. Had no pictures, and we just started page one, and I just started cooking, you know, all the different recipes. And one thing I noticed, because before, with a standard American diet, you're, you're cooking and everything looks kind of okay, but it doesn't look really alive. And when I started cooking these recipes, and I put the vegetables in, and they just the reds and the greens and the yellows, everything was so alive that I just gravitated to it. I just said, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to eat. And so it, it was pretty amazing, you know, how it hit us. And um, there was one other book, and I've got it here to show. The only other book at the bookstore was this one, which is called Extraordinary Healing. I don't know if you've ever read okay. of it. It, yeah. it was published way back in 2006. It's by Art Brownstein. And it's the amazing uh, power of your body's secret healing system. And it's all about our immune system. And when I read this, you know, I told Skip, I said, you know, this is the way we have to go. And, and if you think about it, when you cut your finger or you burn yourself or do anything, how quickly your body heals. But we don't think about that. You know, we just um, go about our daily routines and everything. But that's our immune system working. That's how, you know, it, it heals our body. And so why not? If we eat the right foods, can it not heal, you know, from diseases and um, illness and everything? So that's how we, you know, learn to love this. So with the extraordinary healing, do they talk about diet there? Yes, it's, he talks about um, a whole food plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, back then, I was looking at it. I, I need to read it again. It's been a while. But if you look in the back, um, two of the uh, doctors that he does mention back then was uh, Dr. Dean Ornish and also Dr. Neil Barnard. And I don't think Dr. Esselstyn was around at the time when he was doing that, or, or T. Colin Campbell. So, um, but those two were mentioned and a few others. Uh, but yes, he's definitely um, a whole food plant-based doctor. And, uh, you know, and, and we also watched this uh, YouTube video, uh, which was called The Incurables. And I, I think you can still see it on YouTube, but it was... It taught us, you know, like the, the people had, you know, several different types of diseases and they went uh, whole food plant-based and, you know, we looked at this and, and they cured themselves and we said, well, what the heck, how come our doctors haven't told us this? Yeah. Right. And um, that was just, you know, real eye-opening for us. And so more and more people that we saw were curing themselves and, and they were reversing their diseases and illnesses. Then we said, okay, this is the way to go. You know, if they can do it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. That that was our approach. So, so go ahead. What, well, one interesting thing, when we went on the holistic uh, cruise, it was called Taste of Health, and they had a panel of, of 12 people at the very end of the cruise, and um, they all had cancer, and one was vegan, one was plant-based, one was macrobiotic, one was raw food, and one was whole food plant-based. So you had all of these Back different, you know, Yes, different ways of eating, and they all cured themselves. And so you had to look at, well, what was the reason, or what was the, uh, you know, the, the, the dominating thing that helped? And it was whole foods. It wasn't eating the processed foods. They were all whole foods. 
and um, they all cured themselves. So that was another plus. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Do you, when you cook, do you use salt and sugar and um, oil, or do you try to stay away from those ingredients? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. Well, we're not oil-free, okay, but we know what type of oil that we like to use. And we've been doing a lot of research on oils, and so we use a very high antioxidant extra virgin olive oil uh, with high uh, polyphenols, uh, low saturated fat, and we're not using it. We use it in very moderation, okay? And so we do actually take one tablespoon at night before bed. We literally just take that tablespoon, and it's supposed to be very heart healthy. It has all sorts of, um, you know, like 15 things that's beneficial for our bodies, and especially anti-aging as we're 77, 78, skip this. And um, it's heart healthy, and it's we're not really cooking with it, but we take it that way. Um, there are certain times that I'll use the oil if I'm roasting something. I want to enjoy the roast. I'm going to use a little bit of oil, but it's like one tablespoon spread over a big sheet pan, and it's just enough to make the spices and everything stick, you know, so it's yeah. pretty much like that. Um, you know, it, when it comes to oils, and, and unfortunately, Many of the doctors aren't explaining this. Most Americans are using vegetable oil, and they're and they're using a lot of it. And not only are they getting the oils that way, but most of them are eating processed foods, so they're getting all the wrong oils in the processed foods. So they're getting cottonseed oil, soybean oil, um, canola oil, and all of the bad oils. So they're they're getting an excess amount of bad oils, and this is what we stay clear from. Um, we don't use coconut oil. Um, you know, it's it's very high. Yeah, fat, yeah. Oil, sugar. Here again, <laughs> we we really limit our our sugar. But if we have a dessert, okay. I say have the oh, dessert, <laughs> have the dessert, and enjoy it. Because if you don't, you know, you're not going to enjoy it, and you're going to crave more sugar. So just have the sugar, be done with it. Have that piece of cake. Have that cookie and be done with it, and you won't have those cravings afterwards, is, is my philosophy. It's just the way we work with it. Um, when Skip was first diagnosed, we did stay away from a lot of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And how about salt? Salt, we, salt, we use um, Himalayan pink salt or Celtic sea salt, and um, I feel that, you know, the minerals in it are, are extremely good for us, and um, we do take um, an iron salt, so supplement iodine supplement i'm sorry um just because we don't have iodine in those um salts but um again we use it modestly you know it's not overbearing so you know um you said to try to avoid processed foods and so i'm just thinking if there's people out there who have cancer what if they're reaching for a snack i mean besides fruits and carrot sticks what kind of ideas do you have for people to Oh, wow. Or snack. Yeah. What's not processed? Like no potato chips, obviously. No. 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 Well, you know, they can, there's always, you know, kale chips. They can put those in the oven and make kale yeah. chips. Um, there's popcorn. They can have some popcorn. Um, there, they, you know, again, it, it's really, you know, we eat a lot of fruits um, well, as far as not having the processed foods. Um, but make a fruit salad. Don't make it just one fruit. You know, have a make a fruit salad that has, um, you know, like uh, mangoes in it and strawberries in it and kiwis in it. Make it interesting, you know, not just one fruit. And that way I think you'll enjoy it a little bit more. And before you were plant-based, you were, said you were on a standard American diet? Oh, yes. Yeah, we <laughs> ate meat, fish, dairy, and eggs and, mm -hmm. and, and everything. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel the difference yourself when you transitioned right away or was it after I, well, I did because I had a 50% uh, arterial heart blockage and fortunately the doctor that I had after he did the um, catheterization on it he didn't feel it was you know far enough along to do a stent so I was lucky there and so over the course of these 15 years I don't know where it might have been that you know it cleared up but um, my tests have all shown very positive you know, as far as my huh. arteries go, so I feel happy about that. 
I do suffer from fibromyalgia, you know, the terrible <laughs> yeah. filth that everybody seems to have today. And a lot of it, you know, was stress-related. I, I kind of acquired it when I was a caretaker for my mom who was passing with uh, bladder cancer. Yeah. So I was juggling, you know, caretaking and trying to work and not lose my job and, you know, that kind of routine. And I came down with this fibromyalgia. And um, I spent a lot of years um, on the medications the doctors gave me. They had me on everything. And I just kind of blew up like a balloon, you know, from mm. anti-inflammatories and, and yeah. muscle relaxants and it, you name it, they had me on it, you know. And um, somebody introduced me. It was at a home show to Noni Juice. And oh, you, really? At, yeah. At one time, you could very good, does it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and at one time, you couldn't even touch my skin. It, was, it just hurt to even touch me. Oh. And so, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. And so somebody introduced me to Noni Juice, and I started drinking that. Well, that started to make me feel pretty good. You know, oh, wow. you know really? what? Yeah, it took away the inflammation in my, you know, my skin and everything. And so I thought, well, hmm, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I need to look at this more naturally. Yeah. And so that's when I, you know, started doing more natural things. So, you know, I take melatonin at night, so I get my REM sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I take a, a magnesium powder. And I drink eight ounces of that because we tend to be deficient in magnesium with fibromyalgia. And, of course, my diet definitely helps with it. And, yeah. and, and I know the things that will irritate it now. It never goes away. But if I do a lot of repetitious type things, you know, like vacuuming or sweeping or something like that, I can feel it, you know, but it goes away. I drink my magnesium powder and it's gone. <laughs> and so the, you can manage it without all the you know, drugs that the doctors want you to have. Yeah. So that's good. Did you expect that to get better with the plant-based diet? Uh, no, I didn't. You know, that's why I asked that because it was funny. We, I had changed Noah's skip, and um, one day I woke up, and I bounced out of bed. <laughs> and I, oh, my God, I'm not in pain. You know, it just like, boom, it just went away. Mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't believe it, and I felt so good. You know, oh. and, yeah, and so, you know. It, it it was really kind of a miracle. <laughs> that is a miracle. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, because so my all said you otherwise you live in pain twenty four hours. I know, that's terrible. Yeah. 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 So anyways, it um yeah, it really helped me out. That's so great. and you know, something else to point out, which is is I know it, it's troubling to a lot of people because when you when you're married, okay, you have one person that wants to go plant based, and you have the other person that says absolutely not. <laughs> and um, but you know, I, my gosh, I mean, if you if you've got a spouse that's really sick, yeah. you better change with them. I'm sorry. <laughs> you yeah, you better absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you know, you you just have to. And you know, in in 30 days, you're going to be so happy you wasn't changed. <laughs> so wow, yeah, yeah. It's so that's great. It was a surprise for you that all these things. Did you get another um, angiogram, or how did you know that? Well, they did. Um, is it a sonogram on my main artery? And they were oh, like, car, oh, they mean like yeah. an ultrasound. Yeah. Okay, they said it was totally clear. Right. So, yeah. So I feel pretty confident. That's yeah. Good. You know, I, I'm not out of breath, or you know, I can walk, yeah. I can jump, I can you know do things. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. So let's go through some of the food pictures because that is where it's delicious. Uh, okay. Get our mouth watering. So what is this? Well, this is just an Italian pasta dish. You know, I like to, when you're first starting out, the best thing to do is start with recipes that your family is used to eating. Okay. So pasta is one. Okay. So you want to do pasta dishes. And, you know, even if you have young kids, they all like pasta. So um, there's great ways you can do it. Um, you can make a, actually a, a cheese sauce um, if kids want, you know, mac and cheese, which is one of their favorites. And you can make a wonderful cheese sauce with just, you know, cashews and believe it or not, a carrot, um, an onion, um, some spices and everything. And you blend this all up and you've got this creamy cheese sauce and you can put that over your pasta for kids. And it tastes just like mac and cheese. It's wonderful and it's healthy. And of course we have the Italian pastas. And now this is where I would use possibly, um, you know, a tablespoon of, um, that extra virgin olive oil that I talked about the high antioxidant one. 
and um, and that's just for flavor. But I like to use fresh herbs. I have a garden, so I constantly grow fresh herbs. So that's basil and tomatoes and, uh, you know, my spices, my Italian spices. So it's delicious. <laughs> that looks great. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is a black eyed pea soup. And we always have this around New Year's. And it's supposed to be for good luck. And um, it, it just, again, has your black eyed peas, um, fire roasted tomatoes, onions, um, celery, uh, your greens. You know, we like to use either collard greens um, in, in this particular dish. And uh, it just works. And, it, you know, when we make these soups, it's always enough that we can have it for the next couple of days, too. It's not just, you know, one day. So it helps you're not in the kitchen all day long. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is a breakfast burrito. Um, this one I do use um, a product called Just Egg, and it just makes a nice scrambled egg. It tastes really good. And again, we use um, avocado in it and, you know, tomatoes and um, spinach or any green that you want. You can use kale. Um, and then you put it on a wrap and wrap it up, and it's delicious. I always like to serve too, and you know, have a little side of fruit, you know, some berries or, you know, some um, oranges, grapes. That looks great. Let's see what this is. Um, this is a roasted cauliflower chickpea wrap, and um, the base on that is um, hummus and um, the red onions, and of course, the greens, and um, just kind of wrap it all up, and it's delicious. It's amazing when you start roasting vegetables, and I'll do that sometimes for soup too. I'll roast all the vegetables first and then put it in my soup, and that just adds so much more flavor uh, to it. And, and one of my great cabbage soups that I make, which I don't have a picture, but I make a great cabbage soup, and what I like to do for that is after I've cooked everything is I add one jar of uh, vegan kimchi to the soup, and it's a mild kimchi, so it's not real spicy but it just kicks it up a notch and then you're getting some fermented probiotics with that soup as well. That looks delicious. I love cauliflower. I'm always yeah. like, something to do with cauliflower. Oh, I know. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this one is a chickpea salad. So basically it's uh, smashed chickpeas and you have your onions and um, uh, a little bit of, you know, vegan mayo um, on it, just like you would do a tuna sandwich, basically. Um, you're making a chickpea sandwich. And um, then again, you just add your greens, and you can add some um, cherry tomatoes to it. And lavish bread is kind of like a big flat bread, and you just kind of roll it up in that, and it's delicious. So where can we see some of these recipes, Nancy? Uh, well, I have a lot of them posted on a um, site that's called MeWe, and we have a group on there, and um, we have several members, and it's called Restoring America's Health on MeWe, and it's MeWe.com. And uh, we post, you know, every time I make something, I post a recipe on there, and, um, you know, and I also post other people's recipes as well. Um but also, um, you know, they can follow me on Facebook. Um, I, you know, post whatever I make. I always post my recipes. My grandkids always laugh at me. <laughs> she takes pictures of her food all the time. <laughs> so with your recipes, are they mostly your creations or? I do both. You know, if it's my creation, then, you know, I, I list the ingredients. I'll give the recipe. And if it's um, someone else's recipe, of course, I give them credit, you know, where the recipe came from. Besides the books you were talking about, do you have any other favorite books? Oh, gosh, I have over 100 books. I mean, I, I really do. So, you know, I always started out with the, with the, but at the time they were just, they were vegan chefs. They were, you know, whole food, plant-based, that type of thing. It was all, you know, vegan chefs. And there were so many of them in that's how I learned to do everything because they've already been doing it. They know what to do. And if you want to, in any of these recipes, it doesn't matter who you follow. If you want to eliminate the oil, you eliminate it in the sugar and the salt. You 
you find substitutes, you know, there's all, there's salt substitutes. Um, you know, there's uh, maple syrup that you might want to use instead of sugar, or there's um, agave that you might want to use instead of, you know, there's always, there's coconut sugar. There's, there's, uh, what's the, um, I can't think of the name of them. The, um, ah, the raw food one. Um, Mung sugar? Yeah. Dates. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's the dates you can use. It's, there's all different ways that you can substitute. You just make the recipe according to what you want to do and what's best for you and your family, too, you know. What's your favorite salt substitute? Is it table tasty or <laughs> what do you like? Well, I've used a lot of Costco at the time. Um, they have one, and I like theirs. And, uh, you know, there's always, what is it, Mrs. Mrs. Salt, or I can't think of who she is. She's been around for years and years. Dash or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Mrs. Dash, yeah. yeah. I can use that. You know, anything that's a salt substitute, just check the ingredients, you know. And and um, I always liked the Costco brand. I felt that that was, had a lot of good ingredients. I was happy with that one, you know. And uh, nowadays you have to read ingredients on everything. I mean, absolutely everything. Our grocery store here, which we, we only have three places we can shop where we live in Winter Haven, and that's Aldi's, um, Publix, and Walmart. Unfortunately, we don't have a Whole Foods like we're used to, you know, being able to shop at. And so, um, you know, I, I'm just like kind of horrified when I go into Publix. It's a, it's a major, major store here, but everything you look at is bioengineered, everything. And, you know, you just, you have to really start reading labels now. Take the time, give yourself time shopping because you don't, you know, everything you're buying today is has been altered. That's so why I got into the bread making. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to go through all your photos so we can. Uh, ah, okay. Photos. Yeah. So this is what I call a cob salad and the bacon you know, I said tofu, but I think I made those from TVP, t uh, textured vegetable protein. And I, I'm really not for sure it was either that or tofu because I made it a little while ago. But um, they taste just like bacon. We use, you know, the different spices and, and uh, um, different flavorings to make it taste that way. Um, I use a vegan cheese. Um, at the time, I would have used mozzarella, but I didn't have that. So I used a KO cheese. Um then, of course, I have the uh, tomatoes. Um, all the greens are on the bottom. And, and my eggs are my specialty. Um, those eggs are all made from tofu, and they taste just like eggs. It's, it's totally amazing. So um, I make those with a little olive on them and um, then some cucumber and radishes, and it was totally delicious. It looks delicious. <laughs> it was. It was. Go to the next one. How about this? this? Yeah. Well, here we're, you know, doing a, a tofu shish kebab. And again, um, you know, we're using zucchini and yellow squash, the tofu. Um, we kind of marinate the tofu in a little barbecue sauce. Um, we have mushrooms on there and tomatoes, onions, everything you can think of, really. And um, we just kind of roast them on our grill. And we love this grill. It's a Cuisinart grill. But it's flat, so we can do all sorts of things. If you want to do your pancakes on there, you can. Um, you can do a complete, you know, stir fry on there. You can roast. You can do a pizza on there. You can do anything you want on this, and it's flat. You don't have to worry about food falling in. It's kind of cool. What is it called? It's a Quasinart. Um, just like I don't know what the actual name, but it's it's just Quasinart, and it's it's a flat, just say flat surface Quasinart grill, and Ooh. it'll pop up on Google. Next slide. It's not real expensive. Yeah. This is, um, I was making my homemade pizza crust, um, and it's basically uh, just, you know, vegetables, and I use a marinara sauce and uh, fresh vegetables on it, mushrooms, uh, green peppers, red onions, tomatoes, and it's delicious. Do you miss the cheese here, or is there cheese on it? Well, I, sometimes I'll put a little bit of, of mozzarella cheese on it. You can, and and you don't have to. You know, it tastes. What's really good on something like that is just a little drizzle of um, balsamic vinegar, and that really kicks it up a notch too. Go ahead, next slide, Michael. 
Uh, these are what we call skillet dinners, and these are quick and easy. If you're in a hurry one day and you don't have time to, uh, you know, do a big meal or cook, um, it's simply sautéing some um, yellow squash, um, your zucchini, uh, red onions, uh, some greens if your choice. You can use any greens, uh, any choice of beans. I, I use black beans with this one. Um, fire roasted tomatoes, I love them. And again, you can mix this all together and saute it. And at times, if I want it Mexican, I'll add a little bit of um, cheddar cheese on top and let that melt. Really good. Looks delicious. It is. And then, of course, quesadillas, which are, you know, always easy and fun to do. And I here again, I use either um, like a hummus for the, the base. But you can use, um, I made one the other night that where I used uh, roasted uh, butternut squash, and I mashed that up and used that as my base. And, of course, your black beans or any bean that you want, pinto. And then um, you can add corn to it if you want. Uh, again, your greens and also a little bit of cheese if you want. And then I do uh, put it on a skillet. And, I, you know, I use an oil, but when I say oil, I'm... I, Put a drop on there. I'm basically wiping my pan with it. That's uh -huh. not like it's sitting on oil. So um, I'll brown each side of the quesadilla, which helps melt the cheese and so forth. Mm -hmm. Also, again, and sometimes I'll serve that with a side of salsa. It's really kind of good to dip in. Yeah. Next slide, Michael. Uh, this is my spaghetti squash, and we top it with. Um, I guess a broccoli salad, you could call it. It's it's broccoli and tomatoes, cherry tomatoes and red onion, and um, spinach. Um, you can add parsley. And I kind of mix that in a separate bowl and use a uh, oil and vinegar dressing or whatever uh, your choice is. And uh, mix that up. And then I um, roast the spaghetti squash. And then we, you know how you take the fork and you make the strands so it looks like spaghetti. And you kind of do that and then put the um, salad on top of it, and it's delicious. Oh, yeah. Next slide, Michael. And this is my uh, tofu salmon. This is a new recipe that we've learned to do, and it's it's out of this world. It, it, yeah, you can't even explain the flavor on it, but it's called a sticky garlic um, salmon. And so how do you make the, um, like, how do you make the, it tastes like salmon, I guess. Do you see what Well, again, it's, um, you know, the seasonings that she uses. Um, it's uh, your seaweed. Okay, your, um, ah, I'm going blank on which seaweed it is. It's just, the you know, the seaweed that you make sushi out. Uh, you know, you yeah, make, like nori. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you, nori, thank you. And you and you just chop it up in, in your blender with all the other seasonings that it calls for. And then on the actual tofu, um, you put it between two chopsticks, and you don't cut all the way through the tofu, just halfway. And so you're kind of making that fish-like, uh, you know, cut it, okay? And so then you um, take the tofu, and then you're going to you marinate it in this um, sauce that, you know, has the seaweed in it. And it's best to marinate it, if you can, like 24 hours, because you want all that to marinate. Where can we find that recipe? That looks very interesting. Yeah, you know, but it's it's the oh, really? chef is um, Sam Turnbull, and her website is it doesn't taste like chicken, and she has some <laughs> amazing recipes. Uh, as far as seitan goes, if somebody wants to learn how to make seitan uh, from scratch, she has such easy recipes, and they're all delicious. You know, so we make a seitan steak, say seitan chicken, uh, and and it's all healthy ingredients, which is great. But it, it, you know, she also has a YouTube um, channel. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Out. so I really like her. And you know what's amazing about all these chefs is that you can ask them any question, email them, and they get right back to you with you know the answer. Oh. And so that's really nice. I mean, so people can always, you know, if they have a problem or they need help, um, they can ask them. You know, what did I do wrong? And and they'll come right back and help you out. So that's kind of nice too. But anyways, back to the tofu. Um, um, before you, um, you can bake it or you can pan fry it, okay? But again, I don't use a lot of oil if I do it in the skillet. I like the skillet because it gives it that crust, which you need. 
but you also put another little piece of seaweed under each um, little block of tofu, okay? So when you're, you know, cooking it, it's also getting the seaweed on there as well. Yeah. So anyway, so then you make the sticky sauce, which is a garlic sauce, and um, that's made with your maple syrup and um, your garlic and your soy sauce or Bragg's liquid aminos. You can use those and uh, lots of garlic and it um, has little cornstarch in it so when you cook it it thickens up and then it's like a sticky sauce that goes over it it is, it's to die for it's really good it looks delicious yeah, yeah it, it is and we served it over rice right next slide michael and these are tostitos and again you can do uh, you know anything you want inside and we basically um, we use guacamole and uh, hummus and beans and and uh, and then top it with the um, again the cold like tomatoes and greens and you know you can add a little sour cream if you want dairy free um, and a squeeze of lime juice and it's just really good. Nice. I like Mexican food. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so versatile and there's so many it is so many recipes. Yep. Yeah. Next slide, Michael. Okay, this is the vegetable white bean artichoke soup. And again, it's just a, you know, I call them my my refrigerator soups, basically, because it's just whatever you have left over in the refrigerator, you know. Add the white beans, and then you add your artichoke hearts. Um, you can add any vegetable that you have in, in your refrigerator. And um, then add your greens and your seasonings. You know, I use a lot of Italian seasoning. Yeah, that has such a mix of different seasonings, you know, and uh, it just oh, and one other trick I always like to do if I'm using a vegetable broth is to um, add one tablespoon of Bragg's liquid aminos or soy sauce to it, and yeah, it'll kick it up a notch. It'll make that vegetable broth really rich tasting. Ah, uh, so nice, a huge difference. Yeah. On so yep. Yeah. Next slide, Michael. And by the way, on the oil subject, that, which we didn't cover, is that, yes, you if you're oil-free, you know, you can saute in water, okay? You can saute in cooking wine. Um, you can saute, um, oh, let's see, what are the, one of the other ones that I had on there? Brown. It's sauteing broth, yeah. Yeah, your vegetable broth. And also, um, a lot of people, if they're roasting, will use the liquid from um, the chickpea can, the aquafaba. Yeah, the aquafaba. And they'll use that on their roasted vegetables. You just want to put things on it so your spices stick to it, you know. And uh, so there's different ways you can do that. And, of course, you know, again, go online. I mean, these chefs have all sorts of different ideas on how to do things you know, that you may not think about, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean... Thank you so much. I mean, I'm wondering, um, how can people get in touch with you if they want some coaching or they want to learn more about your recipes? Well, they can email me or, you know, like I said, if they join my group on MeWe, um, I'm there and there's a chat group on there and uh, they can contact me that way or to uh, just go ahead and email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions, you know, they might have. Well, thank you so much. Um, this is Dr. Grayson Neal with the Healthy Planet on Think Tech Hawaii. We've been talking with Nancy Stein, Whole Foods plant educator, uh, plant based educator. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the coverage and conversation, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash Think Tech Hawaii for great content on Think Tech. Check out my website at graysonhawaii.com or Instagram at Graceful Living 365 for more information on my show guests. Thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. If you liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel? Thanks so much.